Okay, I have an issue. I really love tragedy. Like, a lot. So, I've been watching this creator stuff, Vivinos, for a while. I first saw them way back when they did snappy, colorful animations set to pop songs. And then, they probably fell off the face of my feed. But, when I rediscovered them a year later, I was met with what I will describe as uh-oh spaghettios. In that time frame, Vivinos' animations had taken on darker themes than before. Short, sapphic tragedies with the same comforting art style turned on its head to make you uncomfortable. It's uh-oh spaghettios because I knew what would happen to me the moment I saw these videos. <sighs> Alien Stage is an expanded universe, quite literally, about a K-pop battle royale forced onto quote-unquote pet humans, people who are reduced to entertainment for aliens. It, like other Vivinos videos, lures you in with its soft aesthetic and then promptly destroys you. But instead of one video destroying you, we have a whole series. <laughs> Created primarily by Vivinos, her girlfriend Qmeg, and their team from Studio Lyco, the closest comparison I can give is the animated music web series Milgram, but I haven't watched that in years. <laughs> The heart of Alien Stage are its contestants, specifically these six people, everyone's childhood friends who are raised together in what's called the Ankt Garden, a fake plastic facsimile of the outdoors, a specialized music facility made for the stage. After being trained, they eventually face off against each other, singing songs that relate to their dynamics towards one another. And when one of them scores lower than the other, well, it's prophesized and propagandized that those who die upon the stage will go into slash towards Ankt, an alien interpretation of heaven and god. A lot of what I say here is a mix of official websites and posts that don't exist anymore and posts that still do, so take this as feral summarizations. There are couples between all the characters, and <laughs> these are the love arrows. It's wild and kind of funny, but I am mostly limiting myself to one pairing to save my sanity. Or, more accurately, to mark my descent into hell! I'm going to be speed painting a lot of Alien Stage finished pieces and doodles while also including my very spoilerific rambles and theories. I highly recommend at least watching the series at some point. It is mwah, major earworms. I'm also going to put a general flash warning over here because of the nature of speed paints. I will do my best to manage it, but I can't fully guarantee it. So I wanted to put it here. Song one, Sweet Dream. This is the introduction song, showing off all the characters in their most important elements. Each person has this ethereal aura to them, and I adore it. I was so hyped to see this become a series after the first video, and in Sweet Dream, we see these two characters. Look. Okay, this is what happens. I did not know Luca's gender at this point, as did not most of the fandom, but I see a pretty soft-haired person, tired and apathetic with the lyrics, the morning won't come to me. Ooh, they're attractive. I see a more rough around the edges girl, a mirage of the past flashing in front of her. Ooh, they're attractive. <laughs> you know what would be great? I see them together, with his hand on her waist, in complete bliss, as she holds a knife over him. Their music videos took like a year to come out from this point, but it was worth it. You see, the rain is a lot like fictional male-female couples I think are very bi and very toxic. At first it sounds really nice, but once you actually get out into it, it is even better! Song 2, Black Sorrow. So, uh, Black Sorrow has nothing to do with either character at all. <laughs> it's actually about a sad boy named Ivan singing it. The thing pertaining to this video is at the end of the song, where we see our local pretty boy make his appearance, still very apathetic and with a Rubik's Cube in his hand fully completed, which gives this indication, combined with Sweet Dream, that he is over Alien Stage, and also indicates a sort of mastermind energy. At least that was my thought process when I finally got to see him. Look, okay, I, I was desperate. When I first saw his hands in his full body merch along with this teaser, I genuinely thought, okay, which alien fucked a human? Uh, but never mind. Actually, Luca has a congenital heart condition because, as was revealed in his birthday post, he is a living test tube baby, which 
is better. It's so much better, because breeding would be so fucked up in this universe, it, it could still exist. It genuinely could. It probably does. There's probably a fic writer writing it right now, so you speak, oh no, they've already written it. His looks have this angelic feel to it, and almost a hospital gown aesthetic, as this post points out, which, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And the cyanotic fingers are such a fun design choice. I was going through my child rotation as a student nurse around a later time period, and besides the like Raynaud's type beat he's got going on for him, I quite literally started assessing in my head what congenital heart condition he could have. <laughs> it Look, everybody needs an outlet, and apparently determining that Luca does not have Tetralogy of Fallot was mine. <laughs> Nurses can't medically diagnose, but it, it doesn't matter. In preparation for his appearance, we get an interview right before his video. It mentions that Luca has a quote-unquote father named Hepru, this brain-ass dude that bred Luca for the stage. Luca clearly seems very isolated in all of this, and is 100% talking out of his ass here, but the major thing I wanted to point out is Luca wrote the song he's about to sing in this round before this season. In fact, he, unlike most other contestants shown, is the winner of the previous Alien Stage competition. Yeah, in-universe, this competition is the 50th one they've done. Aliens have messed with humanity for a long time. He didn't have to enter this season at all, he could have just left it, but he chose to re-enter. Hmm, why's that? Song 3, Ruler of My Heart. Bro took like 9 months and he is not pregnant, but by god did he deliver. I had been waiting for so long. <laughs> and of course, like any other contestant, we get an introduction. The first part we see of him is him kissing the hand of the contestant he won against, Corpse. Ah, he's <laughs> kissing the hand of a corpse. Bodes well. <laughs> The next part we see, yeah, no, is him in the next round of the competition, facing off against one of the main characters of the series, Mizzy. And when he starts singing, bro, that whistle, oh no. BLAM sounds like an angel descended from heaven, and it's with this video that we realize that Luca is very different than what we thought he would be. The fandom thought Ivan would be the primarily manipulative and secondarily sad boy type beat, but instead, it turns out that Luca is primarily manipulative and secondarily a sad boy. He makes Mizzy, who is fresh off the loss of her beloved, unbelievably uncomfy, and he has this combo of smirks and apathy while doing weirdly intimate gestures at her and holy shit those eyes. He's basically making Mizzy relive the trauma of Sua, her girlfriend's death, tearing apart what Sua meant to her. He's so distant and off, and it almost feels like he's singing about someone else. Like he's not singing towards Mizzy, but past her, about experiences unknown, triggering her until she hits him, and he gains a sickening smile, almost like instinct. It's familiar, this pain, pushing someone's buttons until they fight back, and they get blamed for it dragged away and killed. But this time, the person you're targeting doesn't die. They're taken away by someone you've seen before, in the flashes of wanted posters and in the corners of your dreams. You know, we've been talking a lot about Luca, but I feel like we're missing one of the ca- Oh my god. Huna is a rebel. A radio rebel. <sighs> I'm sorry. Considered a terrorist by aliens because she is actively destroying the society promoting pet humans, she grew up with Luca from the previous Alien Stage competition, and so, originally, they only really interacted with each other and her brother. <laughs> Where's her brother? <laughs> you ask. <laughs> Although she briefly seemed to interact with the upcoming group too. Their lore is shrouded in so much mystery, which is what intrigues me about them. Like, they were the originals. They were the OGs. Okay, well not technically, because they were like in the 50th season, and they were like in the 49th, but they're the originals to us. This three second charge filled glance was all we got of them for like half a year. Yes, I was suffering. AO3 Fix did not save me. Please upload more. I thrive off of pairings very few people care about. 
But <laughs> after this video, we start getting little crumbs of them. Like, for example, there's this image of them as kids where Luca is really annoyed at another person for interrupting Hyuna and his hangout time, which I didn't notice because I was just in happy yippee mode at seeing them in the past in close proximity to each other. Luca, Hyuna, real. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's subtle, but he looks really pissed. Then we also got, whew, okay, Hyuna's music video teaser. Her teaser was right before Luca's birthday, so you see this test tube baby reveal image about Luca, and then you scroll up and get this fucking official thirst trap image of Hyuna. You scroll up again, and you see Luca's wild face right after? On main? This confirmed what I was suspecting and kind of hoping for. This dude is a weirdo. He is down bad. There is something about seeing this pretty boy get rightfully punted in his video and also being a complete fucking freak that is so fun. Vivinos and Q-Manga took literally my favorite mask and femme aspects and characters and said, here you go, you're a perfect couple. Song 4, All In. This video is what I've been waiting for. Ooh yeah, baby. <laughs> 6FU's rough, pumped up singing voice combined with Hyuna's mask looks and this sick ass prosthetic. I'm attracted to Hyuna too. I get it, Luca. I'm also attracted to him, but that's besides the point. Hyuna is so hot. In the video, we see her life as she raises up a scrappy rebellion against alien kind. She's singing in a bar with multiple overlaid plot points. Her past with Luca and her brother, the future where she is trying to save the current contestants, and the friendships she's built in the middle. Also, these cute interactions with Mizzy combined with this official post of Luca towards Till only fuels my bi headcanon, which you don't have to agree that they're bi. I, for one, just wanted to show it. <laughs> it is a densely packed three and a half minutes. Seeing these two's childhood was the most hell yeah moment I've had because oh my god, she is super peppy, he is very stressed, incredibly isolated, and also a certified loser. Seeing these blossoming affections they have for each other, specifically Hyuna curling a bit of his hair in her hands, and how Luca's are so much more obsessive than hers. Dude was very much controlled by his father, and so he latched onto her, which also indicates to me that Luca had some pretty poor socialization or neurodivergence in emotional development. For example, when Hyun Woo, Hyuna's brother, seems to be yearning for the outside world, Luca is sucking on his thumb through his sleeve until Hyuna gives him a head pat, which is something his age range would have normally grown out of. But considering he was born for the stage and also seems to be outcasted by most, it makes sense why he's like this. It's probably why Hyuna took him under her wing. I also say he's poorly socialized because he does not know boundaries, the clearest sign of that being when he tries to kiss Hyuna in such a desperate and uncomfortably unhinged manner, which I'm assuming she rejected because her feelings weren't fully developed for him. Developmental-wise, they're three years apart. Currently, he's 30 and she's 27. And for those of you about to say that Luca's old, I am very saddened or happy to mention that people do not deteriorate at 30. Shocker. <laughs> But child development wise, he'd be an adolescent while she's still school age. So that's like an 11 to 12 year old interacting with an eight to nine year old. Like she probably still thinks that space cooties exist. It's very, very different to be growing up at those two ages. I assume though that neither of them saw any big difference, specifically because Luca is also depicted as being very weak and febile in these scenes. Like he's seen as very fragile by the rest of the group. So. It's something that probably didn't register in her mind or his mind. I'm also assuming she rejected him in this scene because in the next one, her brother is dead. <laughs> and, and Luca is also on the ground just giving this face, which made me lose it a little mentally in a good way. For me, Hyuna has this guilt over him in the future, perhaps for liking him in the first place, and is using substances like smoking or alcohol while trying to still be peppy to cope while well, he has almost this worshipping, religious attitude towards her in a song. Also, I love how in this scene, the guitar quiets, and you just hear the lub-dub of a heartbeat. <sighs> so fitting for these two. Now, 
you do what this child does in real life, at minimum, you are getting a restraining order. At maximum, you are being charged with murder. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. What Luca does is bad. Don't do it. In fiction, though, hell yeah, 100%, take me into this fucky wuckiness, we are bringing out the scale. <laughs> I don't know what's up with me going with obsessive couples. This feels like deja vu. <laughs> Because to possess is the closest thing to love he believes a person like him can have. <laughs> you know my deal. If you've watched that video, you know my deal. I'm a sucker for characters with fucked up autonomy trying to gain them back in the worst ways possible. There are three major theories as to what happened here. The first one is that pushing him was an accident while her brother Hyun Woo was confronting Luca after he tried kissing Hyuna, and Luca was struggling, being physically weaker and having a heart condition, and finally pushed him over. Luca falls over too, but his smile is one of satisfaction over pushing over Hyun Woo, until his eyes widen as he realizes that he's unintentionally killed him. The second is that Luca intentionally riled up Hyun Woo, and his smile was more because he was hurt and was hoping Hyuna would pity or look after him, trying to manipulate her sense of responsibility and affections towards him. Until he looks over and realizes that Hyun Woo is infinitesimally more hurt than he is, aka very dead. This makes sense to me because in this drawing, it indicates that it was commonplace for these two to fight because of Luca doing something, and then Hyuna pulls them apart, scolding her brother. Also, the positions of their bodies and Hyuna's look doesn't quite fit with the Luca intentionally pushed him theory to me, but we'll find out soon, I'm sure. And I would also like to ask you, remember what he did in his song? pushing someone's buttons till they fought back to make that person look bad. And the final one is, well, uh, <laughs> Luca just wanted to kill Hyun Woo and did it. You know, just, just cuz. Which, uh, like, if he grabbed Hyun Woo's leg when he fell and tripped Hyun Woo over so he'd fall too, that would also make sense as to why both of them are on the ground. The first person I saw to present these theories was Princekin on Tumblr, but that post has been deleted. Uh, so it, it, it existed at one point in time, but that's where I just first saw it. Luca did everything he could to get Hyuna's love, and in doing so, ended up being more isolated than he was before he met her. Like in this drawing of Luca with Hepru behind him, shows his collar yellow. The collars are, in my opinion, for heartbeat and potentially emotional dysregulation. Luca is someone who tries to actively control his heart rate. Yes, actually. <laughs> and to see him so scared or resigned, combined with this isolative feeling emanating from here and this birthday post, Ugh. Oh, he's now climbing to the top, just for the chance that she sees him, even from afar. His undying devotion, plastered on every ad, every holographic screen. See? See? Look. Please, just look. I am genuinely so curious as to how this world works. A deleted site mentioned how aliens had instruction guides for taking care of humans, and that the reason Alien Stage is so popular is because Sagan, aka the in-universe term for aliens, don't have the vocal cord capacity to sing. So they get humans to do it. The instructions had things like, don't pour acid down humans' throats, because aliens can apparently handle acid. Not good. Not good. Instructions like these had to be put in place, because these goop monsters were doing that to baby humans. This combined with the fact that humans have chips in them with their names in it if they're in alien stage, and of course that they're collared like dogs, all brings this idea that I don't think aliens understand how to deal with an emotionally dysregulated child. Both of them had such severe lack in bodily autonomy, and it seems to me that they both reacted to that in different ways. Hyuna in the future has this hyper affectionate and almost hypersexual way she acts because she has control over bodily autonomy, but is still trapped in her guilty thoughts around Luka and Hyunwoo. Well, Luca's body is still heavily regulated by aliens, but his control is rooted in his thoughts surrounding Yuna and his actions on the stage. There's this gorgeous post by Yui Samidere on Tumblr that also breaks down the interpersonal horror of these two, and I love that post so much. 
It's super long and detailed, and it, once again, is what I cannot help but love about fandom. It's so fun to have thoughts you've thought up be put to word by another person so eloquently, and to see things mentioned that you've never even considered about the topic. The aspects focusing on how these two tackle control and bodily autonomy, along with the mention of poor socialization here, are very much inspired and taken from them. Please read it for further brain rot. Allin's lyrics have some fun references throughout them, like this one part at the beginning that I'm trying to vaguely remember the, about how the person who's looking at her, their heart's beating fast because she's appearing at them, and this is like 100% a stretch. Rare pairs have done this to my brain, but like, you know, Luca's whole thing is about heartbeats. Yeah, that's not <laughs> like conclusive or concrete at all. On more concrete terms, she talks about how she's the person from Your Wildest Dreams with Luca overlaid on it, and the words, who will remain standing at the end of it all? Don't you want to know? While overlaying her brother and Luca, this, with the knowledge that one of them is about to die, is so funny. Oh, that is disgustingly mean. I love it. <laughs> Luca overlays not only that, but the lyrics, Thought you could step all over me. Turns out you were wrong, too. Even when surrounded by his image, Allin shows her fighting back against the hold he has on her mind. Song 5, Drunken Party. This bonus song is fun, it's poppy, it's great. Huna needs an intervention, oh my god. The whole song emphasizes bringing back long buried dreams, like those of rebellion. How Hyunwoo never got that chance, that he never got to sing. So she wants to do this to free him. It's unbridled and reckless, stating how Hyuna has nothing to lose, so she'll do whatever she wants, which fosters a concern for how far she'll push herself. What's enough? Alright, now that that's through, think of this as a brained up checkpoint if this video is not already one in and of itself. The introverted, poorly socialized person, ex extroverted, like unrequited childhood friends with crushes to enemies, a win. Hyuna takes on this big sister role for a lot of the kids. The thought that she liked Luca at one point, and potentially still likes the glimpses of young him, distresses her. It makes me yearn to see them more as kids when they were warm. I was so starved after Hyuna's video that when I saw this post about these two in the past, just like I had wanted, my reaction was intense. Oh my god, guys. Fuck, I've just- I've jumped out of bed. I am losing my mind. Oh. My. God. Ah. Ah. Oh my god, are you kidding me? We get- we get the Luca Huna. Ah! More of them. We get more of them. I'm going to vomit. I- I've literally just jumped out of bed. The moment I saw this, I- I took a walk around my room. Because I, I, I started hyperventilating, bro. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to know more about these two. Luca asks Huna a question about if she likes singing, and her response is that she does, because it feels like when she's on the stage, her life belongs to her. Luca's overlaid on the quote, which gives the implication that either he has taken on that same mentality, or that he feels like when he's singing, he believes that her life is in his hands. This is especially because the next line that he says is, but your life belongs to me though. <laughs> if we, oh no. And her response to that, like a very normal person is, ah, you like me that much? Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Oh, oh honey, honey, he likes you. He likes you a lot. <laughs> maybe even, <laughs> maybe even too much. He clearly cares about her and holds her thoughts pretty dearly. Like, he's pretty normal here up until the last lines he says. I think possession is one of the ways he's learned to communicate love, if not the only way, even though it has roots outside of that. What was it like for Huna, post-death of her brother before she got into the rebellion? How did she lose her leg? Luca could have had something positive or negative to do with it, like saving her from some harm, or worsening the harm that happened to her. 
Alternatively, it has nothing to do with him and everything to do with attempting to escape or creating the rebellion, but we don't know. We see their ID pictures, the emptiness she has in it, but also smiles with the rest of the Alien Stage crew. They were stuck together for at least a decade after Hyunwoo's death. What happened in that decade? Please, someone tell me. I only have so many fics to brain rot this concept over. How did they interact? If you're wondering about my theories, it's a mix of dubious consent, bullying Luca, and completely ignoring him when she can, instead pouring all her effort into the rebellion plans, interacting and motivating other contestants as she does. But when he asks for comfort in whatever form, Hyuna either brushes him off or begrudgingly does what he wants. Because if not giving his way meant her brother's death before, what does it mean if she doesn't do it now, when she's grown friendships with the people outside of him? He's become alien to her, and the warmth she once felt for him has a sickening twist to it she can't escape from, no matter how far she keeps away. This is on top of how Luca and her are being treated by aliens, overworked and doing photo shoots, having costumes that fit them eerily perfect because they were probably stripped down and measured, mistreatment and abuse for stepping out of line, preparing songs tirelessly and continually, unwillingly singing for aliens so that they can keep living each exam. All so that they can reach the 49th season of Alien Stage and die upon it instead. It's a box that constrains them, tighter and tighter. Some part of me feels like she re-engaged in the relationship in the hopes that, at some point, Luca would realize how wrong he's treated the people around him, how he's treated her. He'd gasp and kneel at her feet, beg for forgiveness, and say he doesn't deserve it. And then they can go back to what they were. Hell, they could be even better than what they were. There's no blood dripping on his hands, no, there's none at all. This was someone she thought she knew, that she thought was fully innocent and just outcast because of his fragile state, and now he's all she has of the past, the one person that knows what a blissful childhood she had, when it should have been two. Continually going back to a person because you think, this time, this time they'll figure it out, this time they'll realize it. But it doesn't work that way, does it? If anything, people see that as an opportunity to cross your boundaries more, to push your buttons just a little harder. And considering how Luca acts on the stage now, I think I stand correct. It's one of the reasons I'm probably drawn to these two, because chasing after that brief moment where someone recognizes you and someone cares about you the way you've always wanted them to, instead of disregarding your wants, is, well, it's something I'm working on. Not romantically, but platonically. Lots and lots of friends who don't prioritize our friendship like they used to, with me picking up the pieces. And what's left if not this yearning for a better relationship, for what ours once was? Above all that talk of age milestones, poor socialization, and bodily autonomy, does Luca even regret Yunwu's death? Or is it apathy towards it? Maybe even relief that the person he loves belongs only to him? We don't fully know what he thinks, except when we look at his songs. Interlude. Th this part has no number because it's it's not a song. <laughs> the parallels and contrast between these two, seeing how Luca rises to the top of Alien Stage under the controlling thumb of his master, and how Hyuna becomes a rebellion leader, their merch stands also parallel each other? Okay, technically every stand does for every pairing, but hear me out. They have the same pose, contrasting designs with his being a solar eclipse and hers a lunar eclipse. He is literally blocking out the sun and she is illuminating the moon. Also, if you go back to the intro with these two, it's the same color palette as her merch stand. She is literally his brightness. That is what the song Sweet Dream is talking about. There is literally a cover of him singing this song. 
BL8M has an incredible range. I, I cannot believe that this is the same voice. Also, in all of these songs, Luca has a lot of lyrics that interconnect with their story. The white dress dyed red referencing Hyunwoo, and also the night with the kiss in this part, and then the quote, you hold me tight as if nothing happened. It's like he's yearning for a sweet dream to be brought brightness, asking for someone to save him. Please. Luca is so dead. <laughs> His eyes are almost closed in the covers, and one of the people who's dead, Sua, if you remember, has their eyes closed in her covers, and like, also there's the lyric, the morning probably won't come to me. He's so gone. He's so gone. <laughs> Unless Yuna decides to kill Heparu instead, dude is dead. Ruler of My Heart references moments in his past too, of endless walls, a fall with no ground, my world crumbling. He's surrounded by the moon and calls her a star, revolves around Mizzy as if he's revolving around the earth or a sun, calling Huna his savior, pretends that Mizzy is her, and when the fall with no ground happens, the entire stage turns purple-black as if shifting into darkness. Rereading his interview, dude 100% wrote Ruler of My Heart for Yuna. It's, it's not even funny. It's so interesting to look back on it, how he wants to find a worthy opponent to face off against, like he did in the previous season, how he says that mandatory playtime was his favorite for interacting with others, although he's definitely masking the reason why it was his favorite time, isn't he? Hmm. He has this conviction about how no one should dare covet his new throne. Is it a throne, or is it a person? All things considered, he probably went through all of this. The training by his alien owner, teaching himself to slow his heartbeat, to put up this false mask when he talks to aliens about how he loves their support. When we saw how disinterested he was with the flashing cameras in his introduction, to rise up and up and re-enter a competition where if he loses, he doesn't just lose the show, he loses his life, and he does it for her. After all, her life is his, isn't it? Oh my god, I swear. <sighs> The appeal of these two is wanting to see them fuck. I'm sorry, I meant to see them fuck. I'm sorry, I genuinely don't know what's happening. What I meant is that the appeal of these two is praying to see Hyuna shooting Luca and him being 100% into it. <laughs> Have you gotten that intention from the cosmic explosion of doodles I've done of them? It's not even funny. They have brain rotted me to my core. I am a sick little brain rotted Victorian child who needs Luca Hyuna to survive through the winter. Also, if you're wondering why my pieces have all this weird stuff Luca's doing, uh, I read and saw multiple posts where his mouth was made emphasis in very specific ways, and I don't think that the official cafe art where he chews on Till's hair, or pulls off his glove with his mouth, or the art of current day him looking like an absolute freak helps with this at all. There are so many wonderful fan comics and fics that have absolutely changed me for the worse. <laughs> it's so good, my god. Like, what happened? Something possessed my soul. There's so much suspicious fan and official content of them, it's wonderful. For example, there's this bonus official post that has the main pairing stretching each other. Yeah, no, I know what it sounds like. Ivan is trying to kill his love interest Till, and Mizzy and Sura are just being super cute, and then there's <laughs> the The Luca Huna one makes me giggle so hard because it's just... Oh, it's so awkward, but so weirdly intimate, and I, oh, And plus there's this little chibi page that has young him being dragged around by her and being the happiest little guy alive. The E and I, as I finally found out because of a comment, stands for extrovert and introvert. I'm glad I was right on that one. God, they were so cute. Man, I want them to keep being cute. God, they had so many issues that they could have fixed so that they could have fucked. And that brings us to the AUs. There are two major ones. The first one is a cafe AU that made Luca Hunos go absolutely wild. Luca is the CEO of Sweet Dream Cafe, and it's described in his little, like, character description thing that he is someone who looks young but has years of experience. Ah, in, in cafes. <laughs> 
Um, Hunas is also like the weirdest description I have ever seen. It describes her as like number one hot sister maid. <laughs> what? what the fuck is up with that wording? But that's not the thing that made like Luca Hunas absolutely lose it. It's the quote that comes right after where it's like, hot sister maid, even the boss can't win. The explosion of fan art after people read this quote was wild. The other AU is the actor's AU. It's a warm romance fluff thing to help you say, hey, this character's not dead, they're just acting. <laughs> all of this is so fun, and all of this said, if these two don't duet and have an explosion of merch after said duet, I swear to god. I ordered this gorgeous pre-order of a fan-made pin set of them because I am so desperate, I need to make stickers of them to slap onto my life. Song 6, Love and Peace. Transitioning back, we have Hyuna's newest bonus song as of recording this video. Love and Peace came out with Drunken Party and emphasizes her yearning for her brother, for a son in the pervasive darkness that Luca encompasses. And, like the song title says, wanting for peace, a final rest. And after all she's gone through, who wouldn't want it to? The smile she has in this image because the stage is her life, music is her life. Seeing her eventually let go of smoking for the most part by sucking on candy, hell yeah girl, we love to see it, and slowly letting go of other substances because she wants to feel better so that she can help others, it's wonderful. The music and animation are absolute bangers each time I go through Alien stage. Each person has the perfect voice for their character, and the combination of still and animated images plus the delectable coloring is so fun. And to see these two develop with this series is a joy, because their story is cyclical. She's lost everything because of him, and he'll lose everything because of her. Luca keeps embedding himself deeper and deeper into this sickening competition, dressed in frilly costumes forced onto him like a doll, reliant on the medical aid his father provides, paraded around like a plaything, trying to get Hyuna to just spare him a glance. He digs his foot into the stage's slick surfaces instead of giving an honest apology. Because if he doesn't care about her brother's death, if he's actually overjoyed at Hyuna being only his, something that finally belongs to him, then this is the most honest version of himself he can be. Or perhaps this is his repentance, a years-long absence and suffering without her, songs strung out in the hopes of something else, something more. How terrible it is to be so deeply entwined with someone's heart that no matter how hard they try, they can't untangle the knot without severing the organ hole, a sickening lurch in your chest. If he can't be with her as her lover, then he will be with her in the corner of her eye when she glances around her room, the chill up her spine when she sees his image illuminated in holographic lights. She can't move. He wants to be her god, to give her anything, to be everything for each other. Warmth, wonder, horror. So they will be. <sighs> That's what I love about it. And also wanting to see them fuck. <laughs> Thanks for watching. When tragedies like this are so well executed, I feel like they can be just as satisfying, if not more so, than a happy ending. And as such, I'm excited to see how terribly terribly or wonderfully terribly this video could age depending on the next Luca Hina lore drops. Either way, I will react to them and I will explode. <laughs> Bye!